June 7, 1944, the day after the Allies had launched their massive invasion of Normandy. Heinrich Müller stood at the edge of the forest, his rifle slung over his shoulder and the morning fog hung heavy in the air, mingling with the smoke from distant fires. Heinrich had heard rumours, whispers of an immense armada and relentless waves of soldiers, but details were scarce and few and far between. And as a soldier of the Wehrmacht, Heinrich had been stationed near Cannes, far enough from the beaches to avoid the initial chaos, but close enough to feel the tremors of the invasion. His unit had been ordered to hold their position until further notice. The night had been restless. Distant explosions and the drone of aircraft made sleep impossible. But now, as the morning light filtered through the trees, Heinrich and his comrades awaited their orders. He hears a closer rumbling now, and he turns to see a motorcycle roaring down the dirt path, breaking the uneasy silence. An officer, Hauptmann Fischer, dismounted and approached the group. His face was drawn and pale, eyes shadowed by exhaustion. He gathered the men, his voice carrying a mix of urgency and resignation. He tells the men to listen carefully, and that the enemy had landed at Normandy, and the invasion is far greater than they had anticipated, and the Allied forces had established beachheads in multiple points along the coast. Our defences have been overrun. It was at this moment that Heinrich felt a chill run down his spine. The rumours were true, but the reality was even grimmer than he had imagined. He glanced at his comrades, their faces mirroring his own shock and apprehension. They had been told that the Atlantic Wall was impregnable, that any Allied attempt to land would be crushed. Now, it seemed, that confidence had been shattered. Huffman Fisher continued, detailing the strategic situation. He says the British and the Canadians are pushing inland from Sword and Juneau beaches. The Americans have secured Omaha and Utah. Reports indicate that they are advancing rapidly. Our forces are attempting to regroup, but the situation is dire. As Heinrich's mind raced, the implications were clear. If the Allies succeeded in establishing a foothold in France, it would spell disaster for the German war effort. The Eastern Front was already stretched thin, and now the Western Front was collapsing. Fisher continues, the orders are to hold this position and prepare for a potential counterattack. His voice was steady, despite the chaos. And on a final note, he tells the men that the enemy must be delayed as long as possible to allow our forces to reinforce and regroup. And on that note, the men dispersed, the weight of the news settling heavily on their shoulders. Heinrich found himself a quiet spot at the edge of the forest, his thoughts a whirlwind of fear and uncertainty. He thought of his family back home in Hamburg, of the promises of victory and glory that now seemed hollow. The reality of the war had always been brutal, but now it felt like it was hopeless. And as the day wore on, Heinrich watched the skies. Now they were filled with allied aircraft. The distant rumble of artillery and the crackle of gunfire grew closer. He knew that soon the fighting would reach them and that they would be called upon to hold the line against an overwhelming enemy. Heinrich clenches his fists around the rifle, trying to steady his nerves. He had no choice but to fight, to follow orders, and to hope that somehow they could turn the tide. But deep down, he knew that this was the beginning of the end. The success of the D-Day landings had changed everything, and the dream of a German victory was slipping away. As dusk fell, Heinrich and his comrades prepared the defences, the weight of their new reality settling in. The war had taken a decisive turn, and they were now on the losing side. The side they had been winning every battle up until now. They weren't used to losing, so to hear that there was a drastic loss like this on the front lines was tragic. And so, June 6th, 1944, aka D-Day, the Allied invasion of Normandy marked a pivotal moment in World War II. But what did the German soldiers on the front lines know about the broader scope of the war? I mean, did they realise that this was the beginning of the end for the Third Reich? Join us as we explore whether German soldiers knew that they were losing after D-Day.
Now, the period following D-Day was one of intense confusion and uncertainty for German soldiers. While the High Command and many officers understood the strategic implications of the Allied landings, the average soldiers on the ground's awareness varied greatly depending on position, rank and access to that information. And for many German soldiers stationed on the Western Front, the initial shock of the D-Day landings was profound. The scale and intensity of the invasion were unlike anything that they had ever experienced before. Now remember, they've not faced any counter-attacks at all. The feeling of invincibility is going through their heads right now. But to hear that they were getting continuously beaten back by the Allies must have been a worrying thought. And so the reports from the front lines were chaotic and often conflicting. Communication was a significant challenge. Frontline soldiers often received fragmented updates and the information was heavily filtered by Nazi propaganda, which aimed to maintain morale and depict the situation as under control. However, the reality on the ground told a completely different story. Now the weeks following D-Day saw rapid Allied advances. Key cities' strategic points fell one after the other. For the German soldiers, these losses were undeniable indicators that the tide was turning against them. Now, despite this propaganda, many German soldiers could see the writing on the wall. The sheer scale of the Allied invasion, combined with the relentless Soviet advance on the Eastern Front, painted a grim picture. Letters home and first-hand accounts reveal a growing sense of despair and inevitability among the troops. Conversations among soldiers often reflected their growing doubts, many who were speculating about the outcomes. Understanding that fighting a two-front war against overwhelming forces was unsustainable and by late 1944 it became increasingly clear to even the most isolated units that Germany was on the defensive. The loss of key territories, the destruction of German cities by Allied bombings and the scarcity of resources all pointed to a looming defeat. Now the impact on the home front was equally telling. German soldiers on leave or receiving news from home saw the devastation wrought by Allied bombing campaigns. The stark contrast between Nazi propaganda and the harsh reality was impossible to ignore. Now, can you imagine watching on TV that the Nazi propaganda or that your news company was saying that you were winning key battles on the front lines and that your men were holding strong, but yet the town next to you had been completely turned to rubble? I mean, ultimately, while the German High Command continued to push for total war and absolute victory, the average German soldier increasingly understood the dire situation. The hope of turning the tide faded with each passing day, replaced by a struggle for survival and a desire for the war to just end. And so as the war drew to a close, the realization that defeat was inevitable became universal among the German soldiers. The once powerful Wehrmacht was reduced to a desperate defence and the dreams of a Nazi victory crumbled into the ruins of war. And so, thank you for joining us on this exploration of the German perspective after D-Day, but don't forget to like, comment and subscribe for more insights into the events that shaped our history. And I'll see you next time. We shall fight on the beaches, we shall fight on the landing ground. On the road, to Berlin, to Tokyo, to a final victory. I have a dream. This nation will rise up. Go to the moon in this decade and do the other thing. Not because they are easy, but because they are hard.